questions I get quite a bit from uh, viewers is uh, dealing with the different pump rods, pump cups, uh, pump cup retainers, those type of things uh, for the Sheridan and the Benjamin uh, air rifles. So I thought what we'd do is just take a minute and kind of go over some of the differences that you might find uh, when you tear into your gun and, and how to uh, get the right seal for that particular model. And we're going to start with the Sheridans here. And basically, you have two uh, styles that you're going to run into. There, there may be others that I just haven't seen or I'm not aware of, but they're going to be one of these two usually. And let's talk about the first one here. This is the uh, pre-1964 adjustable pump rod version. And you can see there's threads on this end and a jam nut and threads on that end in the jam nut. And that's how you identify these. And these came originally with these, um, some kind of synthetic seal material in here. And um, if you wanted to, well, I did actually. Here's another one where I, I dug all the seal material out and actually burned it out with a torch. Let's take a, a series of grooves here around the outside and tabs down below and so I'm not sure if they poured the material in and these tabs retained it in place or, or how that worked but I have yet to find uh, a seal that you could insert in here um, to replace the original assuming you went to all the trouble of tearing it out and uh, or maybe burning it out. So basically if you have this style uh, you take this off and toss it. So then what do you do? You have, uh, you're have you left with this, and you can buy aftermarket pump retainer, pump cup retainers. And this thread here is uh, quarter 28. These are threaded quarter 28. This one's from the Mac 1 air gun shop. And you can buy that and put that on there, and you have a little bit of adjustability uh, still and tighten up the nut and do the adjustability uh, adjustment on your length of your pump rod from this end. And there you go. This other one is a uh, retainer. I think I got this from Rick uh, Wilnicker at Precision Pellet. And you would similarly just install that there. Take your new pump cup, set it down, and run this around there, pressing down until you get that seated in here. And then you tighten your jam nut, adjust it from the other end, and you're good to go. The other type of Sheridan uh, pump rod that you're going to run into is this type. And Sheridan went to the non-adjustable pump rod in uh, 1964. And you can see the difference is there's no threads at this end, no jam nut and no threads at this end and no jam nut. And so what you would do is if you have this style is you would force out the old seal, which uh, looks like that. Um, and so you would force out the old one, set this one up on its end, and then install the new one uh, and put it back in the gun. You're ready to go. There's no adjustability here. So you're, you're finished at that point. If you want to retain some of that adjustability, as far as the length of the pump rod, maybe you have some uh, head space that you want to adjust out, what you can do is get one of these um, from Mac One Air Gun Shop. Uh, and he's made it a little bit extra long at this end so that you can uh, adjust this somewhat. Cut off the end here, uh, thread this portion for quarter 28, put a jam nut on, install that, and uh, you're good to go. You have an adjustable pump rod again. Now if you have a Benjamin, the pump rod is going to look something like this. 
and let's put one of the, put the shared next to it. One thing you see right away is that uh, the Sheridan pump rod's quarter inch. The Benjamin is five sixteenths inch, and at this end, it's uh, five sixteenths twenty four is the thread. Um, at the pump cup end, it's five sixteenths eighteen. And this is, I believe, the original style here that they came with, with a the uh, pump cup pressed onto the end. Maybe it was poured onto the end. And if you take this. Uh, seal off of here, which I've done, you just get a screwdriver and force it off. You end up with something that looks like this with uh, uh, without the seal. There's the one with the seal. Here's without. And the seals you'll get in uh, a kit for the Benjamin look something like, like this. Uh, they've got a whole that goes over the flange, and you can, let's see if we can do that. Maybe you can force it over there. I've, I've had difficulty forcing these on because I think these pump cups were designed for a later version of the Benjamins where the retainer looked like that instead. And you notice a couple of differences. Um, one is that this flange at the end is quite a bit smaller here on the modern one. It's, um, let's see here, 340 thousandths roughly. And this one is uh, five, uh, a little over half an inch. And so the difficulty in forcing these seals onto that uh, old style is that you may rip this and ruin the seal. I suppose you could heat it up and, and force it on there. Uh, what I tend to do is uh, put this in this piece here. I have a metal lathe and I'll put it in there and I'll turn this down to where it's equal in size to the flange here. And once you do that, you may be able to fit this over the top. And if you have a drill press or something where you can spin this, you might be able to take a file and file this down uh, to that 340 thousandths, and then this would fit over. It may not be a perfect fit because um, you notice the, uh, the depth here is different than the depth here, um, but it could work. When I do it, I take the, uh, I put it in the lathe, like I mentioned, and I'll turn this down, and then I'll take some, a little bit off of the body here so that these dimensions are the same as that. As a matter of fact, when we're looking at it, this is um, about a quarter of an inch. So this looks to be about an eighth of an inch here, the space. You need to take another eighth off so that this matches this one. And I, th I think you need a lathe for that. So about the best you can do is, if you have this is, is get this reduced on the flange, and then this will go on a little easier. Hopefully it'll stay on and you'll, uh, you'll be all right. I thought it's interesting. Uh, I pulled out a kit that I had bought some years ago from Ron Sauls, and Dennis Baker, of course, has now uh, taken that business over, Baker Air Guns. And um, it's interesting that in his kit, Ron Sauls included both styles of pump cup. The uh, more modern version that you would fit uh, onto this this one or um, or this with some alteration, but he also included this. And I guess the idea is that who knows what type of pump cup you've got um, and retainer because uh, you open up a gun and you're surprised a lot of times you'll find. Um, you know, you'll find an adjustable pump rod in a gun that shouldn't have one, or you'll find a non-adjustable shared and pump rod in a gun that should have an adjustable rod. It, you'll open up an old Benjamin and, and it'll have the, the newer style uh, pump cup retainer, and a newer one will have the old one. So it, it, they're all over the board, and I think what, what uh, Ron Saul has decided at some point was give them both, and that way you're covered. Uh, either way. 
And if you're in doubt, I guess I would suggest that one thing you could do is pull the pump rod out of your uh, tube, take a picture of it, and send that in when you make your order, and that way uh, you'll be better assured of getting uh, the right parts. You know, while we're on the subject of these uh, Sheridan air guns, we've been talking about the pump cups, but uh, I get a lot of questions also from viewers about, you know, when was my Sheridan made? And um, so that's one question. The other thing is there are some differences between a couple of these Sheridan models um, in terms of the internals, mainly with the bolt. Um, and there's differences between the Sheridans and the Benjamins in terms of the seals that they use on the exhaust valve. So what I wanted to do is take just a minute here and uh, talk briefly about dates of manufacture and some things you might want to look for depending on what, uh, what area your gun was made. So for one thing, Sheridan did not even start putting on uh, serial numbers until I believe it was 1972. And if your gun is made after 1972, you can go to a book like this, Know Your Sheridan Rifles and Pistols by Ronald Elb or LB. And this was published in uh, 1992, I believe. Uh, April 1993, published by uh, Blacksmith Corporation. And I don't know if this book's still available or not, but he does go into a list of serial numbers. And what he did is he actually went to the Sheridan factory and got this uh, information from them. And so they started in 1972 with number one. Uh, this is after, what, 30 some odd years of, or 25 years of making these, they finally put a serial number on it. There's also a book, if you're interested in Sheridan's, called Sheridan, Classical American Air Rifles by U.J. Backus. And this was published in uh, November 2011 by uh, America's Press. And I think if you Google uh, U.J. Backus, and there is probably a link to his website which deals with all the different models of Sheridan's and in particular the Model A and B, but also these streaks and the Model C. So this is a great book. It's got a lot of good history and uh, photographs of uh, the internals of some parts and externals. And he also has a serial uh, number listing, again, starting in 1972. So this matches up with the Elby book. If you have a gun, I'm going to zoom in here for this, Some guns starting in the mid-1960s have a number, uh, let's see if I can get that in focus here, um, well it doesn't seem to want to focus, but um, there is a serial number, there it is right there, actually it's not a serial number, it's a date stamp, and it's right here on the gun. This one says 76. Uh, you may not be able to read it, but it says 7691G, I think. And what they did is they transposed the first two numbers. So it's a, the year it was made, but backwards. So if it says, for instance, here 76, that would be mean that this gun was made in 1967. I'm not sure what the 9 and the 1 mean, but I think the G at the end means the month, which would be uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, July of 1967. But that's a date stamp, not a serial number. So one of the reasons you might be interested in when your gun was made is because there have been some uh, production changes over the years. Uh, I, I did uh, correspond with the viewer about his Sheridan and he was concerned because it didn't have an o-ring on the bolt and it didn't have anywhere to put it. Well if you have a gun that was made prior to what about 1963 or 61 somewhere in there your bolt is a straight one like this and there is no o-ring on the bolt it just fits up in there so 
you wouldn't expect to have an O-ring on this one. On the other hand, the gun that was made a few years later, quite a few years, but um, let's see, get this in the picture. This has a curved bolt here, if you can see, rather than the straight one, and it also has uh, the O-ring here. So if you get an O-ring uh, in a parts kit or a seal kit and you've got nowhere to put it, it might be because you have an older gun that was designed not to have it. And then one last thing I wanted to mention about these Sheridans that's uh, different than a Benjamin is the exhaust valve. And this is a four-port exhaust valve. I don't know that they ever did any that had um, single ports. And we've, we've looked at single ports um, on the uh, Benjamin and how to how to do those uh, and how to reseal those. So the Sheridans, on the other hand, came with a synthetic ring on the where the compression chamber side of the valve is, and it came with a lead seal on the back side where the uh, the nut goes. So in this case, you know the nut would go here, the lead seal would go here, and then the nut would go over that when you screw it back into the tube. So it doesn't have two lead seals. It has a lead seal and a synthetic seal. And, and in some cases, I see people are rebuilding with synthetic seals on either side. Uh, I think the Mac one air gun shop has a, a white, hard white uh, seal that goes on, you know, one goes on one side, one goes on the other. And those seem to work pretty good. Um, the other thing, I guess finally, about the Sheridans that's different than the Benjamins is that they used a steel nut, retaining nut, in the uh, tube to hold the valve in. You can see it's uh, similar. Well, let me grab one of the Benjamin here. All right, here's a Benjamin uh, retaining nut, and you can see they're identical. Thread is the same. The uh, size of the, the uh, nut driver was, would be the same. Uh, the, the shape is the same. Everything's the same except for this is made out of steel. This is made out of some kind of brass or bronze alloy.